to Shifting Impressions, Conversations with the Realm of Beings with me, Greta Chamberlain, Yvonne Crayer, Lee Steima, and the Realm of Beings. Shifting Impressions, which is one of the vehicles that supports the transmission of the Realm of Beings, is here to assist you in delving into your being by providing numerous topics and discussions for you to intake as you deepen your connection with your inner world. Shifting Impressions is here to assist you in strengthening yourself as you excavate to understand your true nature. Lee, Yvonne, and myself with the Realm of Beings eagerly invite you to join us today and learn to shift your mindset, shift your thoughts, and shift your focus to recreate your life and produce a new you. Shifting Impressions starts now. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Shifting Impressions, Conversations with the Realm of Beings. I'm Lee, and I'm here with my co-hostesses, Greta and Yvonne, and of course, the Realm of Beings. And we're very happy to be on Transformation Talk Radio live every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. When you hear that term, realm of beings, you may ask yourself, who are they? How do they operate in our lives? Why are they coming through with these messages now? Do we all receive guidance? And if we do, how can we learn to use it to move through our lives with ease? These conversations will help you to examine your life and your creation of reality. They will help you to shift your impressions and understand what you're creating in your life and how it shows up. So let's start shifting impressions. Today, we'll be working with the quotation, we choose our personalities to support us in the creation of our realities. Good morning, ladies. How are you today? Doing well, thank you. <laughs> I'm 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 fine. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Greta, what are you creating out there? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> I feel like I'm flying today, but go ahead. <laughs> so we have this quotation, we choose our personalities to support us in the creation of our realities choose our personalities so when exactly does that take place mm. uh we have to go let's go to the part of when we are an incarnate because the incarnate stage conception comes after the incarnation because Greta? conception cannot occur until you've established um, not everything about what you're going to experience, but you're looking at the lessons. The lessons are already there. They're there when you were an energy essence, before you decided to incarnate into a physical species of some sort. That's what I want to go back to. I think we should do a time out because we're using terms that are audience may not be completely familiar with. So would you mind taking a minute or two to explain the term incarnate? Okay, then let's go back to energy essence. Okay. If we, um, if I get rid of your whole body, all your bodies, because you have more than one right in that space. You have a mental body, you have an emotional body, you have an astral body, you have an electromagnetic body, you have a nerve body. You have about 20 subtle bodies that are attached to your physical body that you don't see. Mm -hmm. Those bodies in illness are affected by the health challenges you have as well. If something's going on with your nervous system, you've got to work with the nerve subtle body. And what happens is that um, uh, medical medicine just takes care of this. It doesn't take care of the rest of the bodies that are attached to you. So I'm saying that all to say that we are more than what we think we are. So with that, let's go to the incarnate stage, but let's go before that. 
And I'm going to use before and after just to be able to help people understand the movement of this. But everything technically is all going on right now. Now, now is the only thing. There is no past, there is no future. Only the now. Okay, but to make things easier to understand, we'll talk about past, okay? Um, in the past, quote unquote past, uh, you were an energy essence. What's an energy essence? It's a being that is nothing but pure energy. When you go back to that you are pure energy, then you must realize then that you are the force. Everything that has been created is the force because there's nothing else but the force, nothing else. Everything else, including these bodies that we have, uh, we can consider them to be illusions. They're not real. We just make them real. Now that's an important point. We make them real to us. Okay, so as the energy essence being the force, you already know what lessons you want to learn already. You know, some people will say, well, you're going to be given the lessons or you choose your lessons. In a sense, yeah, you do choose your lessons because you're the force. And the force knows what it wants to experience. Because see, this whole thing that we're going through called life, and life anywhere else, the life of an ant, the life of a tree, the life of a hawthorn, the, which is an extraterrestrial being, the life of a Pleiadian, which is an extraterrestrial being, the life of an Arcturian, which is an extraterrestrial being, are all the force. So how do we know that? If we get rid of all of your bodies that I talked to you about, all 20 of those bodies or so, give or take, you're going to be down to pure energy. Each one of us. When we go down to pure energy, you are going to look like me and I'm going to look like Lee. We're all going to look like triplets, identical triplets. We're going to be exactly alike because we are more than this. We are not, you are not your body. Your body is just the vehicle that you are occupying for this humanoid experience. That's all it is, okay? It's like getting in a car. It's like going to the car dealership or to a used car. Well, we won't say used because we're all brand new. So let's, you know, uh, going to a car dealership, you, got, you might have three different models. You're going to choose which model you want. That's like how we choose our bodies almost, okay? We can make a, a, a relationship with that. So as the energy essence, which is the force, that's what makes us the force. We're all one. It's the illusion that there's separation. Separation does not exist in any context but up here in our brains because mm -hmm. that's what we have been taught and when we came in to this experience there were certain things we were given and certain things that we were we blocked ourselves from okay so here we are in the energy essence uh and now we become an incarnate because the force says okay i'm it's like this Yesterday, I was teaching class, and I said, okay, look at my hand. All of this, these are, well, yeah, we call them fingers, but they're all part of this hand. If you say, give me your hand, I'm not going to give you this part and not give you my fingers. I'm going to give you the whole thing because this whole thing is my hand. So this whole thing is the force which creates all of existence. However, it has extensions, but this finger is my extension of my hand, but it's still my hand. This finger is an extension of my hand, but it's still my hand. So Yvonne is an extension of the force. She's still the force. 
Lee is an extension of the force, but still the force. Greta is an extension of the force, but still the force. It's like an amoeba with the pseudopods. It, it sends out itself, but it moves together. You see? The pseudopod doesn't come off and say, oh, let me go over here. And the other pseudopod says, let me go over here. My finger didn't say, okay, I'm going over here. And this finger says, I'm going over there. We're moving together in concert because we are all one thing. Okay. So once we've decided to experience being some type of being, then we take on the incarnate stage. The incarnate stage, like if you, uh, you can read about people that I think they call them, um, oh, it's not past life, pre-birth experiences. You can listen to them on YouTube. They have quite a few people that remembered what it was like when they were in the incarnate stage. If you want to listen to people that, you know, if you want to listen to those stories, it's called um, pre-birth stories. Okay, so. But what happens is you choose then, you have these lessons. You have these lessons already. So then the thing is the H-O-W, the how. How are you gonna learn these lessons? That's the biggie, how. So let's, let's just stick with being humanoid right now. Okay, so here I am a humanoid incarnate, I got to I gotta build myself. It's like when you go into a house, the house has been built. You got the foundation, you got the walls. It's, you're building it. If it's made out of bricks, you're building the bricks. So you're building this body. You're building, you're setting the tone for your experiences based on the lessons you already have because you are the force, you know what you want to experience because the force is in continuous creation and it's in continuous creation to experience itself. I'm the force, you're the force. Greta's experiencing herself as the force. That's why I create reality. It just didn't pop up and say, okay, you create reality. Everybody creates, re everything creates reality because everything's a force. When they say in, the, in some of the holy books, you are made in the image of that which created you, th they were accurate because we act the same way. Ha ha. Now, this is the thing. I'm going to finally get there, Yvonne. I'm coming to it. I'm coming to it. I know it's been long, but I'm coming. I have a lot of patience. I'm waiting. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing is then, first how is my decision I want to be humanoid instead of being a cat, instead of being a cell in a humanoid body or a cell in a reptilian body. I'm going to be humanoid. First, that's the next thing. I got all these lessons over here, but I'm deciding I'm going to come here at the incarnate stage. I'm going to be humanoid. So there we go. So what else do I have to do in being humanoid? I have to build a body. How can I build a body? I can't build a body until I have the basis of the foundation for that body. And that is my birth parents. Notice I say birth parents because some people use certain people, two people to come into this experience, but then they move from those people and choose another set. That's another choice, you see, that's a choice. So you choose the parents. Now, what happens when you choose the parents? When you choose the parents, you get the genetic makeup. It's gonna set up something right there. Then you're going to get, um, after, oh, and you got to choose to decide if you're going to be male or female as well. That just doesn't, you know, that's choice. You come here as a male, you come here as a female. Then you got to decide uh, after that, um, what's your body going to look like? Am I going to take on more characteristics of the birth father 
or am I going to take on more characteristics of the birth mother? That's the other thing. Because then when you've chosen the parents, you've chosen your DNA. When you've chosen your parents, you've chosen your epigenetics, which is that long line of everybody who came supposedly came before you. Because remember, I'm using past and present just to help people understand this process. Okay, so you got your epigenetics. Like some people decide they want to experience addiction. So they'll choose parents that have already had that in their makeup. So then it will transfer to them when they actually formalize themselves. So personality, here we go, Yvonne, I told you I'm coming. <laughs> okay, the, the personality is, okay, I'm gonna take this, I want anger. I, I want, I want, I really want to, to experience anger. So I'm gonna choose a parent that is already uh, an angry person. So uh, that's gonna be handed down to me by DNA, that's gonna be handed down to me by epigenetics. So I'm actually formulating my personality. How am I going to act? When you choose your parents, you're also choosing your cultural framework. You're choosing your religious framework if that's where you want to be. You know, some people come, parents, they choose parents who are atheists or agnostics, and they like to, uh, they want to experience that so that they can take that on. And then maybe later on they change, you know, whatever. So we build it. So we build. Who is Greta, what is Greta going to be like? By parents, epigenetics, DNA. We get all that going for us. Personality. Then, ha ha. The, the, first of all, does, does that answer your question, Yvonne? <laughs> Come on now. What you got for me? I know you got some questions. You always have questions. Yeah. Oh, boy. Um... You want me to keep going for a while? I can keep going then. What came to me? Um, okay, so we're talking about the force and uh, the incarnate stage personalities. And I don't know why, but what, what started percolating in my mind was like the, the idea. I know I don't want to switch it too far off track, but concept of water and like water is in you know you were talking about your different fingers being an extension of the force but um like the idea of water like we're all like there's just this big ocean and this kind of in the same what you're trying to portray like that maybe like the force decides like as it's water that it wants to be a droplet of water or it wants to be a bit of ice or it wants to do this. Is that similar idea or is that way off track? Just, I don't know why this came to me, but I figure I'll bring it up. Like, does that make any sense? We can take water. We can okay. take water. Energy essence mm -hmm. decides I'm going to be incarnate, but I want to be a molecule of water. So what am I going to have? I'm going to have everything in that. But the, this little molecule of water is going to contain all kinds of stuff inside there. Each one of those things inside there is also a species, just like we are. It's chosen to be a part of the water molecule, be it an atom, be it a proton, electron, or whatever is up in there. Okay. So it's chosen that as well to formulate. That's why Dr. Emoto, who's no longer uh, with us, did such brilliant work on water mm -hmm. to realize that water has consciousness and that when you put water next to a sound, that it doesn't, it does, it's, it's not that the water judges something to be a good sound or not a good sound. 
It's just that it looks at it as sound. So its nature is to change its molecular structure to fit that sound. So it sort of like resonates with it. It's almost the same thing as the sound. It's a pictorial ref, you know, representation of the sound. As far as it is concerned. Mm -hmm. Because you're and looking the bodies at bodies are what they say, like 70% or 80% water too so maybe that's why that kind of popped up here and in, in talking about i mean we're really talking about personality i think we're going off track a no, little bit with no we aren't really not really no. because all of the things that you've talked about are part of the development of personality mm -hmm. you know all of those parts all of that ourselves everything they all contribute to that now, I'm sure psychologists would probably differ with me. I think they would. I think a lot of scientists <laughs> would probably differ with you. I'm sure they would too. In fact, they have. So, I, you know. <laughs> it's all right. No, but it's science right. is coming around, I believe. Maybe sooner than we think, there will be some sort of unified physics. So let's see what science holds for us in the next couple of weeks perhaps. But see, those things, when you talk about science, see, what's interesting about science is that it's the creation of reality. Like That's a um, good time to like hold that thought, science and the creation of reality. I know we've, we've been wound up here, but uh, Lee, do you want to take us on to break? We've been getting the cue on the, on the inside that time to take a break. So yes. Thank you for listening to Shifting Impressions. I'm Lee. That has been Greta and Yvonne. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Thank you for uh, staying with us. We are Shifting Impressions, Conversations with the Realm of Beings. And I'm Yvonne. I'm here with Greta Lee. And of course, the realm of beings. And we are getting ready here to um, <clears throat> move into our second segment. And we've been having a very lively uh, conversation around <clears throat> the quote, we choose our personalities to support us in the creation of our realities. And Greta has gotten us started um, with a, a, a small question I had about what is the incarnate? Because that is where it all uh, begins um, about choosing uh, personalities and choosing our realities. And right before break, we brought in the idea, the concept of science. So if you're tuning in and listening um, live or uh, on YouTube uh, down the road a bit, um, I would like to explore this topic a little bit deeper uh, because in the mass media, we hear this idea of science um, talked about a lot. So how, Greta, from your perspective, from the realm, how does this fit into what our quote is today and what we've been <clears throat> discussing? Well, how it fits in is creation of reality. And uh, that's how we started talking about before when we went into break, that everything is creation of reality. So it's like um, uh, one day I was at a training session, training uh, the people to, to learn how to facilitate like I do. And um, they, uh, they were having a discussion about this scientist just Notice what he, they said. This scientist discovered, now I can't remember what the discovery was, but discovered so and so and so and so. Everybody was excited. And so what I said to them, I said, the scientist did not discover anything. What the scientist did was create it. You can't discover anything, it's impossible. Now you may work towards something, you say, I'm working toward this, because like, there's a, uh, I don't know if people are familiar with the book, The Keys of Enoch by J.J. Hurtock, which can be a challenging book to read, but uh, nonetheless, it's very expansive. And um, 
he talks about he talked about the DNA in in the in the text and uh, gave some other information. Okay, then I got this other book. I was reading. I said, "Oh my goodness!" Now let me preface this by saying that the book, "The Keys of Enoch" by J. J. Hertog, because there are other books called the uh, talking about the keys of Enoch okay but I'm talking about the one specifically written by J.J. Hertog okay okay this gentleman then 10 years later the J.J. Hertog book I think was written in the 1970s correct <clears throat> so then you have this other gentleman who wrote a book about DNA and his whole discovery he had spent 10 or 12 years working on this idea of DNA and how it all functioned and whatever. I thought that was, I said, wow, look at that. But how I looked at it was, I said, my God, he spent 12 years doing that when all he had to do was read The Keys of Enoch, J.J. Hurtock, because he had it in there in 1970s. <laughs> So he didn't create to read that information. If he had read that information, he gave it the whole thing he spent 12 years trying to figure out, okay? So, but what he did was he decided that this was going to be his task and he was going to work it out. So he spent 12 years of his life doing that. And after the 12 years, he said, this is what I've discovered. And then he wrote a book about it. I can't even remember the name of the book, but it dealt with DNA. So this is the thing. It's not about discovery. It's about creation. Everything is created. Nothing is discovered. When you uh, think about discovery, you can buy, oh, by chance, oh, I see this, this little thing moving around. Oh, it's, I'm going to call it an atom. Or I see some other stuff moving around it. I'm going to call it an electron. Because, see, you're creating, you're creating that which you think you are discovering. It's what happens, what's, is what's taking place. And then what if you want people <clears throat> to create things at exactly the same time, like there's a discovery supposedly on this side of the world and a, you know, like. How, how do you explain that? Like these things are happening simultaneously, like you're creating the same concept in science and whatever. I mean, you hear about those things all the time. Uh, so, so what do you think? What do you think enables you to do that? That's not by happen chance. You're, yeah, I don't know, people create it here. It's it, because we're living in, uh, that this, everything's happening at the same time. Everything's happening in the now. But a much more important thing to understand is that there is an unconscious, which is part of this force, unconscious energy. I think that's what it is. Unconscious energy, uh, light body, but I'm, I'm not going to get into it. I mean, white body, white body, not light body, white body, but I'm not going to get into that part right now. That'll really confuse everybody. But um, not to say that people wouldn't understand it, but I wouldn't have enough time to discuss that with the time that time restraints we have in this podcast. But the thing is that um, because, okay, I'm gonna take it a little bit deeper now. There's only one force. We're not talking about God, but you call God. The force created everything. So the force created quote unquote God well that what you perceive to be God or that which people call the universe everything was created by way of the force so the unconscious is just is the force as well it's just another finger to the hand so and get this everybody thinks you have your unconscious Lee has hers, Jacob has his, Dr. Pat has hers. Everybody's got an unconscious. Ho oh, ho, wrong. There's only one. There's only one unconscious. And we all 
deal with the same unconscious. You see, so consequently, we can tap into that and we'll have the same discovery going all over the world because we're tapping into the same source. We are the same source, we're the force. So it's just one part of the force is developing an atom over here, another type of force that, oh, I see something. I'm gonna call it an atom too. You know, it's, we're all one. There is no separation. So there is no separation really in thought. There is no separation really in creation of reality. What we don't understand is that if there's somebody over there having an anger experience, I'm also privy to it, even though I don't even know that person. Why? Because I'm one with that person. That's why when we understand oneness, you know, then we can have personalities that will all be in tune to oneness because it's the personalities that we decide. I want to be a serial killer. I want to be a medical doctor. I want to be a uh, high paid prostitute. I want to be homeless. Okay, these are all personalities. See, I want to be, per so the personality is how we are. That's what create, we did our how. The personalities help us gravitate toward the how. They help us gravitate toward that. You know, I place myself with parents that are going to teach me by the time I'm through, I'm going to be a pedophile. Okay, and then because I've been uh, abused by my parents, I've turned my personality is expressing being a pedophile. And consequently, I'm going to be a, uh, I'm going to support other people who want to experience being molested by a pedophile. Now I use that really deep. Yeah, that's strong. Personality <clears throat> experience. Yeah, it is strong, but it's another personality. When you take that pedophile and you get rid of all their bodies again, then nothing but the uh, force. So we've been talking about these, like what perhaps our audience could perceive as separate choices in personality, you know, and how it relates to the force. Like these are all decisions that the force has, <clears throat> you know, has decided to experience so it can grow and evolve. So I would like to move it into a place of like, so if that's the case, then how, you know, like I would like to experience peace and harmony. Maybe that's not exactly what, uh, you know, I've had different lessons over the years of my physical life so far, but however long I'm left uh, to, you know, be in this body on this, physical plane I want to see more peace more creativity more beauty more harmony like how is it that since we're all united how can we all like I don't want to make my ideas you know somebody else's but I think that um the world would be easier to function if instead of having all this violence and people that are uh, whatever you mentioned pedophilia and other things so what say you on on that how what it what is a good way to to bring us all together like if we say we're all in unity we're all part of the force how can we behave or choose personalities that are gonna gonna have that happen it's the first thing is to love yourself Oh, here we go. So We're going you, back you, to the basics again. <laughs> because you're, you're thinking outside. See, mm -hmm. you're already thinking outside. You say, how can we help people bring peace to the world? Mm. You know, w one day my daughter called me. She said, Ma, I said, what, Kai? She said, uh, I want you to meditate with me on such and such a day at such and such a time. I said, why? What is that? She said, well, people are meditating for peace all around the world at this time you know different times but they all 
it's all at the same time, basically. You know, like like t- my two o'clock Central Time would be your three o'clock Eastern Time, but we all still do it at the same time. I told her I couldn't do it. I said, I can't do that with you. She said, why can't you do that, Mom? I said, because I have to see peace already. I have to see peace. If I'm meditating for peace, then I don't have it. I think it's something that I'm trying to get. We're trying to have peace in this world. So we're going to meditate for it because we feel it's absent. Mm. The thing is not to feel it's absent. It's to see that there is peace. You have to you have to know it. You have to take it down in your gut. I don't care what you see going on around you. You hold the peace. And where do you hold it? You hold it internally. You have to be in peace yourself. Because when you're in peace yourself, it's going to move out. If everybody's in peace, it's going to move out. You have to see it. Don't pray for it, for God's sake. But what if all those people <clears throat> that were getting together globally saw it and it's just a formality of solve them getting together? They haven't solved anything. No, Let's saw look at the it. World. They saw peace within themselves. They just decided. No, they didn't see peace within themselves, Yvonne, because they're praying for it. Mm, I don't know, because I've been involved in those circles. And I think a lot of people that are involved in those they do see it. It's just that if they're you getting go together. And you talk to those people, not to cut you off, but if you go and you talk to those people, you're going to see that they have a lot of challenges within themselves yeah. that is not giving them peace. This is the thing. If we have peace, we're not going to have any uh, challenges in our relationships with each other. We're not going to have any health challenges because what is peace? Peace stems from love. Peace stems from love. Peace is a root. Fear is a root. Anything that you would consider low vibration, depression, hate, anger, is stemming from fear. Anything over here, love, peace, joy, is stemming from love here. But we have illnesses, we have challenges. I can tell you right now, I know I'm not in peace. And I'm not going to sit here and say I am. Because I know towards it. what can help. I'm not talking about moving toward it. The, the thing was, you said that the people are in peace. Well, I don't I, know that for sure, because I don't, I don't know each one of them individually. I just feel like I have been in those circles it seems to me that they've made the intention they're doing something towards that not only for themselves but they're coming together as a group so I don't but the but my point Yvonne is this in order to have peace you must see that it is already done Mm -hmm. and when it's already done you don't have to pray for it You don't have to meditate for it because it is already done. That That is what I'm saying to you. Yeah, you see it as it's... it's, You have to because in the creation of reality, you see the thing done. You want to be a millionaire? Don't sit around and talk about it. See yourself as a millionaire. And then put the physical stuff together to seek that. Yeah. You want to be the emotional and the thought process behind, I already am a millionaire. You start feeling like a millionaire. And then before you see it, it, you've got to see it done. Otherwise, you can't have it. So as long as people don't see that there's peace here, it's not going to be there. So you got to see it. Don't don't want to 
I'd love to explore this conversation. We can, bit. we can. We just have a short pause. <laughs> okay, let's take the pause. So, but wait, does this wrap, like, go back to the old adage? Maybe it's, I don't know if it was in the Bible or somewhere else, but become the change you want to see. Gandhi, be, yes. Be, Gandhi. be what you want to see. If you want to, you know, be, have better people in the world, become one yourself. First. And that's Gandhi. Yep. He oh, that was, was Gandhi. The change. Yes, the he was the change that you know. He was the change that he wanted to see in the world. He was the change. Okay, and that's what happened. And well, so are many others. Yes. But the thing is that I was explaining why I could not pray for peace. Right. Because Meditate I on. focus. Yeah. I focus on it, but the first place you must focus on it is within you. Internally, wow. You must seek peace. If you have an illness challenge, you're not in peace. Right. If you have, you're having a challenge with a mate, you're not in peace. You might be fooling yourself, but you're not there. So that, in other words, utopia, the ut uh, Shangri-La, the utopia, where we're all, where I am in peace internally within Greta, within Greta. And then I see, because see perception and personality gives you what you're going to see. If you're an angry person, and you're trying to discuss what another person is like, first thing you're going to probably see is that, oh, that person is angry. How can you see it? Because it's in you. Mm -hmm. You can only see what's in you. Yeah. So if you're praying for peace, then you know in you, it ain't there. So if it's not in you, it ain't out there either. That's what I'm saying. That makes sense. Well, ladies, I, um, again, I hate to end this little uh, section right now because it feels like there's just so much more to explore. But if we don't go to a short break, we will not be able to hear what the realm has to say on this, uh, on this podcast. So if you are both okay, we are going to just take a small break and uh, we'll be right back. Hello and welcome back to Shifting Impressions. I'm Lee, I'm here with Yvonne and Greta and the Realm of Beings and we, we've we reached the part of the podcast where the Realm of Beings actually gives us their take on what we've been chatting about through the last 45 minutes. So let's hear what they have to say. Realm, are you here? Yes. Affirmative, yes. Um, so today we've been talking about the role our personalities play in this creation of reality, specifically the quotation is personalities are how you are thinking. Oh, no, that was not the quote. The quote is, <laughs> we choose our personalities <laughs> to support us in the creation of our realities. So how can you elaborate on our prior discussion that went many ways? Personality is, uh, let me say this to you, that regardless of what species you are, you have what you call in English personality. Another group or species would call it something else, but it's the bottom line is that it is a vehicle to help you create your reality. Because uh, we want you to understand that everything that is created by the force creates its own reality, even a tree. A tree is the force. A tree has personality. Some of you have pets. You look at your pets. They have personalities. You might have a dog and a cat. 
They have each one of them has a personality. And they're supporting each other in the creation of their realities as well. So personality is a choice. How am I going to function here? How am I going to, uh, what do I want to be like? Do I want to have the personality of a person that is very forceful? Do I want to have a personality of someone that's very calm and peaceful and gentle? And then that is going to help me in the dictation of the how to me. The how being, how am I going to learn these lessons? How? If my personality assists me in becoming a judge, a judge in a court, a judge in the Supreme Court, my personality will take over. Am I about justice or am I about power? There are some personalities that they've decided that they want to be, uh, to express the illusion of power. So they go around thinking that they are powerful, which is the biggest illusion going. They think they're powerful. They think they have control. But that personality that feels that it must have power over a nation, power over a person, power over another being. That person who believes has the personality to say, I am powerful. I can manipulate this is a person who is of fear. That is the essence of their personality. The base of their personality is fear. However, so well. when, when you see personalities of people, look beyond what you see. Because what you see is not always what is. Someone was speaking to me. I wanted to ask, it seems like uh, in the illusion that those people who perceive themselves as, as powerful and controlling do somehow seem to manifest that. I guess it's we're going back to the create support, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. If that person, you have to then have the personality that to receive that other individual, mm -hmm. you've placed in your personality that you need to be controlled. Hmm. Otherwise you can't manage your life or as a collective group, manage us as a collective group. We want to be managed. Rome, I would like to step in and take that word power and change it up a little bit because the same personality that might be using power to control and manipulate other people or events or groups, whatever, for their own gain could also empower people to and it goes along the idea of are you in a state of fear or love and when you empower people you're basically not holding on to control or manipulation you're allowing other people the freedom to you know experience their own uh lessons 
You cannot empower anybody. You can? You know you cannot. Because everyone creates their own reality. Mm -hmm. And you can they create can that reality. Them, and you can create that reality as a collective group. So and nobody, the them. other person, cannot manipulate you. The other person in their personality feels that they can do that. And then the other people that have come uh, to be connected, have attracted that person to them, they're creating the reality uh, of to be controlled. Those people have to create that reality. Those people have to create the reality of being empowered. So they can switch it themselves and decide, I'm not going to be <clears throat> controlled by any outside force. I'm going to look within and find absolutely my power, my strength. Absolutely, absolutely. And because it is all it creation of reality. It is all creation of reality. Create support. That's what we've been teaching. Create support, support, create. Nobody can control anybody ever. The illusion is that you think that somebody can control you. Or you think that somebody's controlling somebody. No. But again, no, I guess that's never, that is never, ever the case. To because really everyone controls their own reality at every moment. Because we are creating reality at every moment. You know, and Yvonne, to your point, I guess if you're creating your reality from the root of love, you will feel empowered and attract that wisdom in that vein, let's say. Whereas if you are uh, operating and creating from the root of fear, you will attract the other polarity to support that. Thank you, Lee. Absolutely. Absolutely. Ooh. Well, <clears throat> I Absolutely. know we have so much more to say, but I'm going to hand it back to Lee and we are running out of time here. Realm, do you have just a 30 seconds of closing information for our listeners? The same closing is one that we've been using many times. And that is, it is important for you to love self. We've explored it today with your personalities, how you choose your personalities, which assist you in determining how you're going to create your reality. But each reality for you is yours. It doesn't belong to anybody else. Anything that happens to you is yours. And on that note, we will... Thank you, Realm. Thank you, Yvonne. Thank you, Greta. On that note, we will wrap up another podcast of Shifting Impressions. Listeners, thank you for being here uh, until we create each other again. Once again, thanks for joining us at Shifting Impressions, Conversations with the Realm of Beings on TransformationTalkRadio.com. As you have explored today's creation of reality experience with Lee, Yvonne, The Realm, and me, Greta, each of you is being supported by us in further developing the understanding that you are not just an individual existing in linear time and space, but a multidimensional force of infinite possibilities who is connected to all. So begin to create the realities you want Join us every Friday at 8 a.m. Pacific Time and 11 a.m. Eastern Time on Shifting Impressions at TransformationTalkRadio.com. So long until we create each other again next Friday.